why don't you have all the success, wealth, happiness, love, wellness, and everything else that you want? What's the problem? Is it the economy? Is it that your, your business, your job? Is it it's all the obligations you've got? Is it your lack of time? Is it, is it something to do with your husband or your wife, your kids or anybody else in your family? Now, why is it that you don't have everything that you want? What is the problem here? Well, it appears to me that none of these situations or people that we've mentioned are your problem. And that in fact, nothing outside of you is actually your problem. And so, if it's not outside of you, where must it be? Well, the obvious answer is what? Inside of you. There is an important law of life that you must understand. And that is that your outer world is merely a reflection of your inner world. Let me repeat that, please. Your outer world is merely a reflection of your what? Your inner world. Meaning everything that you see and don't see in your life, do and don't do in your life, everything you have and don't have in your life is a result, a result of who you are on the inside. Meaning that if things aren't going all that well on the outside, it's because, well, things aren't going all that well on the inside. True or true. So I ask you again, why do you not have everything in your life that you say that you want? Okay, so, for, so just, just for a moment here, play with me, just for a moment, we're going to try on the crazy notion, the crazy notion that maybe, 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 maybe the reason is you. Okay, let's just, okay, no hard feelings, just is you. And we're generalizing here, okay? And that maybe, 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 maybe the, the, the main the main obstacle here is you. And again, just for a moment, if we were to assume that, what about you? What, what part of you? Is it your arm that's the problem? No, maybe it's your leg that's the problem. Uh, it's your baby finger. Now that's got to be the problem, right? What about you might be the main culprit here? Did you happen to say your mind? Well, if you did, you got it. My friends, introducing enemy Number one, your mind. Your mind is the main problem. Your mind is the only reason you don't have exactly what you say you want in your life. Now, don't get me wrong. Your mind has amazing power and it can do a lot of incredible, wonderful, fantastic things. The problem is that it can also wreak havoc on your life and prevent you from being nearly as successful, peaceful, healthy, and loving as you could be. And with your permission, for this class, for this class, we are only going to focus on that part of the mind. Because in nature, and remember, you know, you're a part of nature, yes or yes, if you want the, the flowers to grow better, you don't have to focus on the flowers, they'll take care of themselves, okay? You have to focus on removing the weeds around them. Are we in agreement? Okay, thank you. Now, some people, some of you, actually might feel a bit insulted when I say that your mind is, is your main problem. And you know why? That's because most people are actually identified and therefore attached to their own mind. And the reason is because they believe that they are their mind. Let me repeat that. They believe that they are their mind. As in my mind and the thinking that comes out of me, well, that's who I am. Okay, so now here's one of life's greatest secrets. Are you ready? I hope so. I hope you're ready uh, because if you really get this, if you really get it down deep inside, or at least you're reminded of this, it can and it will dramatically alter your life. Are you ready? Here we go. Ta-da! You are not your mind. Let me repeat that so we are perfectly clear here. You are not your mind. And you are not the thoughts that come out of your mind. You know that little voice that's constantly running in your head? that for some of you just said, what voice? Well, that voice. 
The voice you call your thinking, well, even though that appears to be you, it's not you. In the same way that you have a hand, look, here it is, I have a hand, but you're not your hand. I'm not my hand, right? Okay, not your hand. In the same way you have a leg, but you're, you're not your leg. You have a mind, but you are not your mind. Your mind is a part of you, but it is not you. Okay, so if you're not your mind, then who are you? Well, for now, let's just say that you are the one that actually has, I repeat, has the arm, has the leg, has the mind. You are not the voice in your head. You are the one that can hear the voice in your head. You're not your thinking. You are the one that can hear yourself thinking, hear your thinking. Notice that you normally refer to it as my mind. So in this equation, there is the my, right? And there is the mind, yes or yes. So if your mind was you, then who would be the my? Who is the one that is actually, in this case, possessing the mind, right? My mind. Can you see the separation here? I hope so, because it's life-changing if you can. It's, it's like you say, um, this is my car. You wouldn't say my car is me, would you? Or that you and your car are the same. You have a car. You have a mind. So there's your mind, and then there's you. And yes, you actually live in the same house, but you're not the same. So right now, I'd like to do a little experiment and see where some of your minds are at right now, okay? And the goal here is just to learn a little something about ourselves, good or good. Okay, a little experiment. So some of your minds might be thinking right now, wow, like this is, this is deep, but, but I'm excited to learn and grow. And to you, I say, good job, hang tight, stay with me, congratulations, and congratulations for being open specifically. Some of your minds might be thinking, you know what, I already know all this stuff, I, I, I know this. Well, to you, I suggest that you better be careful of the words, I know that, or I know this. Why? Well, let me ask you this. What happens when you say to yourself, I know that? You stop listening. And if you stop listening, what happens? You stop learning. Let me ask you, what's important here? Whether you know this or whether you are living this. You know, in my seminars, I like to ask, hey, how do you know if you really actually know something? The answer is simple. If you live it, you know it. If you don't live it, then you heard about it. You might have read about it. You sure talk about it. You don't actually know it. And by the way, which part of you might be telling you that you already know this? Right, your mind. And now I'm going to say something that you're going to actually hate. Ready? Here it goes. That mind that is telling you, I know that, while you are not fully living that, is not to be trusted. Again, it is not to be trusted. Now hang on before you freak out, and I'll tell you why in just a few minutes. Regardless, for at least this class, if and when your mind says, I know that, you simply reply with, thank you, and I could use the reminder. You know what? I could use a reminder every day myself, so maybe you can too. Okay, let's get to the last group that I want to address here. That's the group whose mind might right now be saying, this is a load of crap. And I'm using crap very lightly, okay? <laughs> Again, who's talking here? You or your mind? I can tell you it's your mind. And again, that voice cannot be trusted. Case in point, how's your life so far? I mean, really, how are you really doing? Are you really, 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 really rich? Are you incredibly, incredibly, incredibly happy? Are you in amazing physical condition? Are all your relationships wonderful and deep and loving and close and beautiful? Maybe so. In fact, you know, I hope so. But my guess is that if your life was that perfect, you'd have never registered for this class, let alone taking your precious time to attend it. As the saying goes, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you always got. So I invite you to let go of your skepticism for just an hour 
and be open to something different. And you know what? Right after this class, you are totally welcome to go on doing what you've always done and you can do it for the rest of your life. Or maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe this will be a turning point for you. And like me, like me, you will have an aha experience that will change your view of your world and yourself forever. So, for all of you, again, don't believe a word I say. Just be open for now and then try it out in your own life and see the results, good or good. Okay, you with me? <laughs> Let's go on here. Okay, so can you tell me what the first element of change is? Well, if you've been with me before, you probably know it, but again, as a reminder, the answer is awareness. Awareness is the first element of all change. And what was the awareness that we've been working on so far? The awareness that you are not your mind. All right, what's the second element of change? Can you guess? Again, if you've been with me before, you know what it is. It's understanding, okay? So, since we all have a mind, would you agree that it might be a good idea to maybe, maybe, maybe understand it a bit? All right, the simplest way to describe your mind is that it's like a big, a big filing cabinet, it, it, and it stores information. Billions of bits of data from every moment of your life, from the beginning of your time. Bottom line, your mind is your information storage bin. It's your database of knowledge. All right, so how does it work? Well, every moment of the day, everything you experience with your senses goes back to your mind so that your mind can what? Interpret and make meaning of it. I want to be clear, so let me give you a simple example. Um, let's say you're, you're, uh, you're driving, you're driving by an empty property, okay, and you see a, a for sale sign, all right, you see a for sale sign on the property. You immediately go what? To your file cabinet called your mind for the meaning, and then your mind tells you what to do about it or not do about it. Now, for most of us, this will simply be a very neutral sighting. We're just going to drive right by like the billion of other things that we see and we just don't do a thing about. But for someone who is maybe in, in the real estate business or who might be uh, an investor, they might have a different mind file under the category of real estate. And they will stop and they might you know, take down the number or the website on the sign so they can follow up in the future. And depending on that file, Another person might actually take immediate action. They might actually pull over to the side of the road and, and they might actually make the call right there and then. In short, the action or the inaction that you take will be determined by that particular file in your mind, in your file cabinet. And you know what? It doesn't just go for real estate signs. It goes for every single thing, every second of the day. Why do you think that you stop at a certain program when you might be channel surfing on your TV? But, and, and, and why do you think that is? It's, be, it's because your mind is assigning, listen closely now, here you are, channel surfing, right? Your mind is doing what? It's assigning each program you pass a meaning, or in this case, a judgment, and saying yes or no. Does that make sense? So, I hope it does because, listen closely now, just, to, just focus right back on me right here because this is critical. Because this meaning creating, meaning creating, meaning creating, meaning creating process is basically what determines your entire life. So it's important, right? I think so because it not only determines your life, it's what determines everyone else's life as well. And here's the kicker. Everyone has different and unique meanings they assign to the exact same object or situation. That's why Joe will, will stop on Channel 16, the, the home shopping network, and Sue will go right on by Channel 16 and she'll stop on Channel 24, the sports network. Now, did you notice how politically correct I was there? Guy with the shopping, girl with the sports, you know, I'm learning. <laughs> anyway, what's the point? That we are all basically the same. 
in that we have the same meaning creating process that runs our lives. But at the same time, we are radically different in the actual meaning we give things based on our files in our cabinet. And that's why sometimes we might disagree. Might. <laughs> you know that. Debbie excitedly says, uh, wow, the sunset is magnificent tonight. And Dan mundanely replies, yeah, you know what? I was just in Maui. This sunset isn't anything special. Now you tell me, what's the difference here? Is it the sunset? Or is it the interpretations these two minds, not people, get that? <laughs> these two minds created about the sunset. The sunset is the same sunset for both. But how they see, or rather, the meaning they give that sunset is radically different. And that, my friends, is the primary difference between us, between all of us. Here is Enlightenment 101, okay? The world and everything in it is basically the same for all of us. But the meanings each of us give that same world can be radically different. In other words, the objective world is the same, but our subjective views of that world are different. One more time, a different way, so you get it. Everything out there is basically neutral. And then we come along, and with this tool called our mind, and we come along and we give it meaning and color and interpret it and make it what it is. Okay, last time I promise, okay? <laughs> this can change your life. That's why I'm going over and over again in different ways. Please listen carefully. You're ready, right? You're ready, yes? Okay, here we go. Nothing is anything until you make it something and then it becomes what you make it. This is big. Let me repeat that. Nothing is anything until you make it something and then it becomes what you make it. You see, everything just is. And then you assign it its meaning. In fact, it actually has no meaning until you give it one. And then the meaning you give it is what it becomes, at least to you. And probably, here it is, only to you. <laughs> And that's why, and here's another biggie, reality is personal. Once again, reality is personal. Same sunset, different mind, different sunset. Comprende? So, you know, I don't mean to get all esoteric on you, but in fact, there is no reality. There's only your reality, and everyone has their own reality. And that's why I say reality is personal. We think that everyone shares the same reality, right? I mean, what's real is real, yes? In fact, no. There's no real. There's only your real, and Bob's real, and Sandra's real, and Bill's real, and Suzanne's real. Have you, have you, have you heard the saying, what you see is what you get? Well, it's, it's not really complete. What it should say is, what you see plus the meaning you give it is what you get. Are you catching the drift here? You know, I, listen, I get it. I understand it's a lot to chew on, but to me at least, this is one of the most important things you can ever understand in your entire life. Do you remember Socrates? Socrates, right? I don't mean like, do you remember unless you knew him, but do you remember Socrates? He was actually a Greek philosopher way back when, like, you know, 1990 or something. Well, actually, I'm only kidding. He actually lived around 400 BC. He's considered the father of Western philosophy. Plato, you heard Plato, right? Plato, not Plato, the stuff, Plato, Plato, was his most famous student. And he went on to teach Aristotle, who would then tutor Alexander the Great. Bottom line, this dude was super cool and super smart and super conscious. Anyway, now that I bored you to tears with the history lesson, can you just tell me what Socrates is well known for saying? Do you know? I'm going to give you a hint. It's, it's only two words, two words. The first word is, it's no, no. And the second word is, come on, you got it. You got it, thyself. Socrates said the secret to life was to know thyself. And what was he referring to? 
he was actually referring to exactly what we have been discussing here. Who are we? Who are we not? How do we relate to the world and how do we relate to ourselves? All good questions, yes or yes. And that's why to me, the stuff we're learning about here is by far, what's the word? By far the most important knowledge one could ever attain. So again, the only difference between us is our individual meanings we give to exactly the same things. And why do we have such different interpretations and viewpoints of exactly the same thing? Because we have different files in our file cabinet called our mind. And those files are filled with information and that information determines our life. Yes or yes or yes or yes or yes. <laughs> I hope you said yes. <laughs> okay then. How do we get the information that goes into the files of our mind in the first place? Great question. Well, we don't start out with, uh, in, in life with like, uh, um, our files filled with information. Actually, uh, for the most part, we come into life at, at like an empty, completely empty container. An empty cabinet, if you will. And from the moment we are born, we, or at least our file cabinet, starts getting filled up with information. Question, where do we get that information from? Well, mostly from the only other things that can communicate with us directly, and that is from what? Other people. And at the beginning of life, I have a question for you. Beginning of life, who are those people? Of course, parents, family, whoever we grew up with, friends, as we grow up a little bit older, it's teachers and religious leaders, eventually it's the media and the web, basically everyone and everything around us, yes or yes. So all these people and entities are filling up our file folders with information about the world, yes or yes. Now here's a very important question. Listen closely, I want you to, I want you to answer this. Is the information that you're getting true? Well, it's true if you believe that every single thing your parents and family and friends and everyone else told you is true, okay? And to me, unless they are like the all-being of the universe, it's kind of doubtful that it's all true, right? Bottom line, bottom line is we come in empty, but then we get filled up with other people's thoughts, beliefs, opinions, e emotions, habits, ways of being, ways of doing, ways of not doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and now here's something, listen closely everybody, don't forget that if you came in empty, they came in empty, right? They came in as an empty container too. And then they got filled up with information and so-called knowledge as well. And so now imagine they are pouring, they are pouring their container of information and dumping it into you. Now for some of you that may be a kind of a, a not so pleasant picture. But that's basically what happened, and you need to recognize that. Regardless, all of this, all of this is simply the natural process of life, originally designed to help you fit into the world, and we continue on that way. But question, whose opinion of the world and whose way of fitting into the world are we talking about? It's their way. So is it your way? No. You remember you came in empty. Is it your way? No. Whose is it? It's their way. Is it the right way? No. It's their way. Is it the wrong way? No. It's their way. And for the most part, they did or are doing the best that they can. So here's a question. Are they giving you information that is true or information that they believe is true? Correct. Believe is true. And that's a huge distinction for you to recognize and examine. Because what it means is that your file cabinet called your mind has been filled up with information and supposed knowledge about life that may or may not be true. And this is important because my intention is for you to see that not only, that not only are you not your mind, the file cabinet, you're not that, but that you are also not what is in your mind. So am I asking you to question everything that you know? Yep. 
because you don't really know it. You heard it. You saw it. You modeled it. You learned it from someone else. Yeah, but Harv, I, I didn't get everything I've learned that I know from my childhood. I've gotten a lot of knowledge afterwards as an adult. Okay, you got me. <laughs> I'll buy that. But you need to recognize two things. How many things? Two of them. Number one, number one. Uh, did you know that 80% of your brain's development comes before the age of three? Three. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me that most, I repeat, most of what we learned about life came very, very early on. As for number two, as an adult, uh, where did you get that newfound knowledge? Did you get it under a rock? My guess is that for the most part, you got that information from what? Other people too. Yes or yes. And so let's cycle back and review. Bottom line, basically, Basically, the file cabinet that you go to to make all of your decisions and give everything its meaning is filled up mostly with information from other people and entities that are not you. Therefore, the storage cabinet that you call your mind, you call your mind, and everything that's in it is not who you are. It's who you learned to be. Let me, let me repeat. Your mind and what's in it is not who you are. It's who you learned to be. And this, my friends, is exciting, fantastic, very good news. Why? Because again, if you know your mind has been filled up with other people's information and it's not yours or you, then you can do what? You can separate. You can separate yourself from it and not take, take its voice, the voice that you hear in your head, as gospel. And that gives you something very, 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 very important. Want to know what it is? It's choice. What's the word? Choice. If you know you are not your mind, and therefore you are not the voice in your head, then you can hear what the voice is saying, but since you are separate from it, you can now be what? Objective. And now you can have a choice. What's the word? A choice as to whether you want to believe that voice or not. Harv, uh, what are you saying? Uh, why wouldn't I, why would I want to believe my old mind? Well, because first, it's filled up with other people's information, and so it may not actually be true. <laughs> and second, because it may not be all that supportive to your success and happiness. Why? Well, how are or were their lives? Are or were they really rich? Are or were they really happy? Are or were they always loving? Are or were they emotionally solid? Are or were they always in great physical condition? Well, if not, then you might want to reconsider listening to them. And again, that's what your mind is filled with, them. <laughs> Meaning, when you are listening to your own mind, you are basically still listening to what? Them, still, now, every minute of every day. Can you believe that? Let me say this again. If you are listening to the voice in your head, you are listening to a recording of information coming from people who may not have done all that well themselves. You believe that you're listening to you, right? But unconsciously, you're listening to them. And again, I'm not questioning whether it's right or wrong or true or false. I'm only asking one thing. How's it working so far? How's your life? Is, is it everything you dreamed it could be? If not, what's the problem? Can you answer that question better now? The only problem, the only obstacle stopping you from being, having, doing literally anything you want is you. And specifically, what part of you? Your mind. Your mind. And specifically, what part of your mind? The information and so-called knowledge that is filed in your mind which is then delivered to you by the voice in your head by way of thoughts. In short, what I'm trying to do here is blow up, boom, blow up the entire, this entire mind scam. Why? So you can begin again. So you can be 
be, be fresh and start over again. But you know what? Unfortunately, you're never going to be able to start from a perfectly clean slate. Unless, of course, like you have a lobotomy or the opposite way you spend like 40 years meditating in a cave. But at least now you know what and who you're listening to. And now you have a what? You have a choice. What's the word? A choice as to whether you want to believe that voice and more importantly, want to act based on it or not. Okay. So we've covered the first big reason that you might want to question the validity of the voice that's in your head. Yes or yes. Simply put, it's not you. Now let's get to the second reason to question that voice in your head. And this one, believe it or not, it might actually be even more important than the first one. Are you ready? I hope so. Why do you think you even have this file cabinet called a mind in the first place? What was the original reason? The, did the universe or, 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 or the evolution of the world, did, did it give it to us to be super successful? No. <laughs> if that was it, we'd all be super successful. Uh, was it to be super happy? Uh, nope. If it was, we'd all be super happy. Uh, so what was it biologically designed for? One reason. Survival. Let me say it again. Survival. You have this storage cabinet so it can be filled with information for a single purpose, to help you survive. Bottom line, your mind is a survival mechanism. That's all. That's its only real function. Its primary function is not to make you successful or peaceful or loving. It's to keep you alive, my friends. It's vital that you get this. Why? Because if you do, your life will change. Your life will change. And if you don't, it won't. It won't. Very, very simple. Now, because your mind is a survival mechanism, what's its main job? Protection. What's the word? Protection. So your mind is basically like, it's like your bodyguard. In, in, you know what, in some of my courses, I use the example that your mind is like, like the sentry on the ship. The sentry. What's the sentry's job? It's to look out for danger, right? To, to warn of what's wrong or what could go wrong in any situation. And that's why it's constantly uh, screaming, look out, be careful, trouble over here, trouble over there. Meanwhile, <laughs> everything's okay. So now you know why your mind seems to have a bias towards the negative. This is important. Why does it always have a bias for most of us towards the negative? It's always looking for the bad because it's its primary job. And because the good stuff can't hurt you, your mind just generally ignores it. That's why for most people, it takes effort to focus on the positive in your life, while the negative just appears easily, doesn't it? Again, What's a good protector going to do? Tell you what's right with your life or what's wrong with it? The sentry, the sentry, well, it isn't really interested in, in the calm seas. It's focused on the possible rocks below and, and the possible icebergs ahead and the storms on the horizon. Yes or yes. And that's why you tend to focus on the problems in everything and everyone. In short, your mind is based in problems and fear in all of its forms, including worry and doubt and overwhelm and all feelings of anxiety. Let me say, say this right now. Basically, all anxiety boils down to fear. I'll repeat it. All anxiety, every time you feel a little anxious, it boils down to what? Fear. Your protective mind, well, it's very good at its job, isn't it? In fact, it's too good. So instead of having a, a quiet bodyguard available to you, if and when you need it, it's constantly on, on hyper alert. It's like an overworried mother. You know, it might have wonderful intentions, but if you keep listening to it, it will drive you crazy and you'll never do anything. God forbid you take a wrong step and you hurt yourself. Oh my God. You know, it's, it's nuts, right? Well, guess what? It gets worse. <laughs> This overworried bodyguard believes that the only way it can truly protect you, protect you, is by fully controlling you. 
And so to control you, your mind begins to take over your entire life. How? Here it is. By having you believe that it is your life and that you and it are the same. You know what? It's kind of like installing a virus protector in your computer that somehow becomes your entire operating system. Every second, it stops everything and does a scan. That's great for finding viruses, but it's not so great for being productive and successful. True or true? So, now we all understand that the virus protector is not the operating system. It's only a program that's supposed to protect the operating system. Again, in the same way, you are not the bodyguard. You are the one the bodyguard is supposed to be protecting. And you are not the sentry on the ship. You are the one the sentry is supposed to be protecting. And who is that? The captain. <laughs> That's right. You are the captain of the ship. The sentry is supposed to be reporting to you, and then you as the captain, you decide what to do. But that's not how it is for most people, isn't it? Most people, they have not created that separation, the separation between the fear-based voice, the fear-based voice and themselves. Meaning the sentry is steering the ship. Can you imagine this? Oh my God, oh, what if the water is too shallow? Sharp right. Oh, what if the storm is brewing? Sharp left. Uh, what if we don't have to, we don't have enough fuel? Reverse, reverse, reverse. Uh, what if our instruments break down? Oh, uh, let's wait for that third backup generator and not go anywhere. Uh, uh, what if we hit an iceberg? Well, it's the Caribbean. I know we're in the Caribbean, but with global warming there, it could be icebergs anywhere now. You know, it's too risky. Let's not go. And you wonder why this ship isn't getting anywhere. Are you getting this? Because if you are, you will be one in 10,000 who understands this. And, and, and one in 100,000 who uses this. And one in a million who lives based on this. Are you at all confused? Well, you know what? That, that wouldn't be uncommon. Why? Well, let me ask you this. Well, what do you think confusion really is? Confusion is a form of fear. And what's the fear? Well, in this case, your bodyguard, your sentry, your mind is worried that if you understand this, your life might change. Or rather, its life might change. <laughs> but Harv, doesn't my mind want my life to change? Uh, what do you think? Uh, would an over-worried bodyguard want your life to change? Of course not. To a protector, familiarity is essential. So no, no, no. Your mind, the bodyguard, the sentry absolutely does not want your life to change. But Harv, my life isn't perfect. Uh, I'm not as successful as I want to be. I'm not as peaceful and happy as I want to be. I'm not as loving as I could be. And you know what your mind says to all that? Who cares? None of those are my business. Again, let me cycle back to this learning. Your mind is not the success director. It is not the inner peace director. It is not your love director. Your mind is your protection director. And that's it. And that's what it's really good at. And to make sure you listen to it above all else, it has you believing it's also your success and peace and love director too. But is it? <laughs> you tell me, how's all that working in your life so far? How's it working so far? The answer will either be um, not very good or okay or, or, or pretty good, but it could be better. And the reason that I know it can't be all that amazing is that number one, you're in this class. <laughs> and number two, like almost everyone else, you are being run by fear. That's right. Run by fear fear. The protective mind is based in fear and lives in a constant state of fear. Now, you might call it stress. It's the same thing. And your life is full of problems. 
Not because there are so many problems, but because all your bodyguard focuses on is what? Problems. Therefore, that's pretty well all you see. And because that's all you see, that's all there is, and because that's all there is, that becomes your life. The reality is that most people spend the majority of their time going from problem to problem. Fixing this problem, then fixing that problem. Then there's this problem, then that problem, and this problem, and, that, and it's the problem then. It's a problem, problem, problem. Hoping one day they will magically have fixed all of their problems and they'll be finally free of them. But have you noticed something? That never happens! We are never fully free of our problems. There's always something that's not quite right in your life, isn't there? It, it could be a, a major or it could be a minor thing, but it's not quite the way we want it at this point. So, because your century is based in problems and your century has you believing that it is you, then you become based in problems and your life becomes based in problems. Does that make sense? Now again, we're only focusing on the weeds here and we're generalizing, yes or yes. But having said that, unless you are truly enlightened, your entire life is based in problems and fear. And for those of you who said, uh, you know, in your mind just said, uh, no it isn't, that's the voice of fear talking. The voice of protection. And by the way, who is it protecting? You? No. Itself. Because remember, if you change, its job as the bodyguard gets harder. Now, here is a real doozy. Now, I don't even remember the last time I used that word, but it was like yesterday. No, <laughs> a thousand years ago. It's a doozy. Are you ready? Here it goes. So we already know that your mind looks at everything as a problem. But can you guess what happens if it doesn't find a problem? Simple. It creates one! <laughs> Have you noticed this? Do you ever wonder why people seem to nitpick over nothing? You know, finding things to bitch and complain about uh, when there's really no issue at all? You know, making mountains out of mohills? Well, now you know. It's because this problem-based mind, it's getting bored. What? No problems? Nothing wrong? Ha! We'll see about that. Uh, isn't this cappuccino a bit on the light side? Uh, it cost me five bucks, you know. Uh, you would think for five bucks you'd get a proper cappuccino in this city, you know? I'm not going to stand for this. I'm going to have them remake it. Damn, the line is too long. This place is terrible. I'll never come back. Can anybody relate to this? Like, like there's nothing and it seems like you're all upset over like that nothing or someone else's? Do you happen to know any people that are like this? Uh, is anyone willing to admit that sometimes, not always, sometimes you're like this too? Okay. So what to do about all of this? Well, it's actually a what not to do. Don't believe your own mind. Don't believe the voice in your head. Don't believe a thought you think. What? Don't believe a thought I think? Correct. I'll say it again. Don't believe a thought you think. Remember, this thought is usually coming from an overprotective sentry on the ship. And therefore, as the captain of the ship, it is up to you, who? You, to take what the sentry says with a grain of salt and then objectively choose whether to buy into it and whether or not to act on those thoughts based on what will support you in your life right now. And that, my friends, is the definition of consciousness. You've heard the word, right? Consciousness. I'm sure you've used the word consciousness. Well, what is it? Consciousness is, listen closely now, living from choice in the present versus programming and habits from the past. Let me say that again. Consciousness is living from choice in the present, in the moment, versus living from programming and habits from the past. In short, it's questioning the mind's voice, the programming from the past, and then choosing whether to act on those instructions or not in the present moment. Good or good.
Okay, Harv, uh, this all sounds good, but hey, you don't understand. The voice in my head is super loud and it never shuts up. Yeah, I get it, you know, join the club. It's called being human. Uh, you know, it's very funny to me how we humans put ourselves up on a pedestal because we're at the top of the evolutionary chain, or, or so we believe. Uh, but here's a question. Do you know any dogs? Have you ever had a dog? Ha have you noticed that dogs don't seem to have this same blah, 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 problem? <laughs> you know, I used to have a golden retriever. His name was Roscoe. And, and he would lie underneath my desk when I was working. He quiet, sleeping, totally relaxed. Uh, every once in a while, he, he'd come up to get his head pet, you know, and move a little bit. Nothing was a big deal to him. Uh, he was just totally chill. Uh, uh, he'd play with some toy for a little while. Uh, he'd eat only a couple of times a day. He was always happy. He was always loving, you know, always perfect, you know, all good. I'm sure you know what I mean. And, and, and of course, at the time, what was I was I was heavy into business and, and trying my best to succeed. And I was always worried, always in a hurry, always stressed out. And I remember, I remember so distinctively, so per looking down at him once, just looking down at him and, and saying, Roscoe, I said, so often I wish I was just like you, but I bet you never wish you were like me. And that, my friends, says it all. Okay, so are you ready for some good news? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Here it is. There are several methods that you can use to tame your mind. And then once it's tamed, there are even more powerful methods with which to train your mind to do what you want it to do and train it, listen closely, to work for you instead of against you, good or good. And, and for those of you who are interested, I have an advanced program that will rock your world. But I want you to get as much as possible from this class right now. So I want to teach you at least one simple strategy to get started with. Are you ready? Here it is. It's called the four magic words. We're going to use four magic words to stop a negative or fear-based thought before it gets any, what? Momentum. You know what, that's important because everything is what? Everything is energy, right? Everything is energy and so are your thoughts. And if you notice, once your mind gets going on something, it very often keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. And for some people, obsessing and obsessing, obsessing, obsessing and obsessing. Can any of you relate to that? Okay. So what are the four magic words? Here they are. They're very simple, but they're very powerful. And you have to use them exactly as I'm giving to you here, okay? Don't change them, just use them the same way. I know they work, because they work for me and thousands of my students. The four magic words are, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Let me repeat that. Thank you for sharing. That's what you're going to say to your mind when a negative or fear-based thought comes out. All right, let's see how this works. So a uh, thought comes into your mind. You hear the voice. Uh, the conscious you, the captain, right, determines who's talking here. Is it your overprotective sentry bodyguard? Well, how do you know? You check. How do you check? What's it saying? Does it sound like, if somebody else said it to you, does it sound like any type of criticism or any type of fear or anything negative or any can't, can't do this, or anything, let's just stay with what's comfortable and familiar? If so, then yes. It's your overprotective bodyguard doing its job, what it's supposed to do. Now, what is your next step? You consciously, remember present moment now, you consciously choose. What's the word? Choose. Do I want to entertain this thought? Is this thought empowering to me? And if not, you are going to use the four, how many? Four magic words and say to your mind, thank you for sharing. Why? Why not just say, hey, shut the frick up already! Because you are speaking to your bodyguard. Why not be nice to it? It's yours. It's just doing its job all too well, but it can't help that. It's programmed. So you are polite, just as you would be to an over-worried mother. You don't get it to be all reactive. You know, just calm it down. And you simply say, thank you for sharing. As in, I appreciate your concerns, but... And then you create a new and improved thought 
that's just more supportive and empowering, and you think that thought. Let me give you an example. Uh, say, this happened to me recently, I don't want to admit it, but uh, say I'm on a little diet and I, and I want to lose five pounds, okay? Um, and, and I'm a bit hungry and I'm working and my mind says, hey, uh, let's eat some ice cream. Uh, you, you can die tomorrow. Now I notice, is this an empowering or disempowering thought? I get, this is a disempowering thought based on my, who, my consciousness and what I want right now. And so what I say to my mind is, hey, thank you for sharing which stops that thought in its track. And then I insert, what's the word? Insert, what's the word? Insert, what's the word? Insert the thought, a better thought. Well, you know, I'm committed to losing five pounds, and so I'm going to have an apple instead. And that's it. You go to the fridge, you pick up the apple, and you start eating it. And so let's summarize. You consciously monitor your thoughts. This is big, stop right there. You consciously monitor your thoughts. What's that mean? It means it's not just on automatic, every thought you have, blah, 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 blah. You listen to what is going on in there. And as soon as you hear the voice in your head say anything negative or fear-based or not supportive, you simply say what? Thank you for sharing. And you choose a new, more empowering thought, a new, more empowering thought to replace it with. Simple, yes? By the way, um, are you allowed to do this? Well, I'll tell you, as long as the thought police don't catch you, I, I think it's okay. Of course you're allowed to do this. You better do this. It's called managing your mind. And remember, if you don't manage your mind, your mind will manage you. I guarantee that will not be pretty. Okay, now since we brought up the thought police, I want to give you three laws. How many? The three laws of thought. Are you ready? You're not ready. Are you ready? You're ready. Okay. Don't ever forget this. Number one, number one law of thought. You have the ability to control your thoughts. Number two, you have the ability to remove any thought from your mind. And number three, you have the ability to install any thought into your mind. These are critical to your life. So let me repeat them. Let's repeat them. Number one, you have the ability to control your thoughts. Number two, you have the ability to remove any thought from your mind. And number three, you have the ability to install any thought into your mind. Now, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? One word, here it is. Power! In fact, your greatest power is your ability to choose your own thoughts. Let me repeat that as well. Your greatest power is your ability to choose your own thoughts. You know, this is so important. I want you to say that with me, please, but use the word my instead of yours. Are you ready? Here it goes. My greatest power is my ability to choose my own thoughts. Good job. So good, say it again. My greatest power is my ability to choose my own thoughts. And why is that your greatest power? Because you get to choose your thoughts and it is your thoughts that create your life. Yes or yes? Yeah, Harv, uh, you know what, I understand this. I just can't do it. You know, my mind is way too strong. You know, I try to control it, but it never lets up. You know, I, I hear myself being critical and, and being judgmental and being worried and, and getting angry and saying things to people that I love that, are, that aren't even very nice. Uh, saying things to myself that aren't even very nice. My friends, <laughs> once again, I hear you. And again, this is totally normal. But it's only normal because your mind is un tamed and untrained. And that is the real problem. Not that you have a fear-based, sentry-based body, bodyguard mind, but that you've never tamed or trained it to do what you want it to do. You've never trained it to work for you instead of against you. Okay, so, so like, is it too late? Like, what, what can you do now? Well, you can begin by consciously, what's the word? Consciously observing your mind and not blindly believing everything it says. You know what? And that's what we've been working on so far in this class. Or, 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 or. 
you can actually take a shortcut and bypass the entire mind-based, problem-based system altogether and learn to live in an entirely new way. The way of true power. Inner power. Not power over anyone else. Power over yourself. And that's an important distinction because power over others comes from our fear-based self while power over ourselves, that comes from our higher self, our true self, our most conscious self, our most enlightened self. You know, Buddha said, to conquer oneself is a greater task than to conquer others. The guru, Swami Vivekananda, he put it another way. He said, conquer yourself and the whole universe is yours. And of course, what part of ourself do we need to conquer? Yes, our fear-based self. And this is what all life masters do. Like the samurai, you've heard of the samurai. By the way, do you, do you know what the word samurai actually means? It actually means to serve. So, you conquer yourself in order to better serve yourself, serve others, and serve the world. Having said that, it's always interesting to me that so many people, they, well, they talk about making a big difference in the world and, and in other people's lives. But you know what? That's as far as it goes. They talk about it, but they can't do it. Why? Because to make a real difference, you have to take real action in the real world. And the same goes for success. And you cannot do that if your life is based in fear and your mind is stuck in worry and you constantly have doubts. In short, you just cannot do what you want to do. You cannot have what you want to have and you cannot live the way you want to live if you cannot conquer yourself and get to a place where that fear-based, problem-based mind doesn't run you anymore.